Welcome to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. I am Dean Nadell, your host, and I'm super excited about our show today with Michael Ocaldo, one of my favorite people on the planet. He's the president and CEO of the Saint Vincent, Society of St. Vincent de Paul here in the Diocese, the greater Baton Rouge uh, area. So thanks for being with us. It's great being with you here You've today. only served that role for, what, a couple of 30 years, maybe? Uh, I, I started my 35th year in December. So yeah, yeah. it's been a long blessing in my life and yeah. uh, certainly something that I do still get excited about after 35 years. Yeah, never hesitation, right, to go never into hesitation. the office. I call it the mission field of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. Oh, it is. So you know, much. we're right in the center of everything. Yeah. And, you know, through the years I've had various volunteers say, hey, why don't we move the administration and the office is part of off the campus? And yeah. I've always been against it because you can really, you get a good flavor of what's there. Even if you're, you know, and you're stuck in your office doing paperwork, yeah. you can still really get a good feel of what's going on. And I, I'm not a great morning person. I'm there in the morning when I need to be, if, even if it's four o'clock in the morning or before. Yeah. Uh, but I, I much prefer the later part of the. So when you're you're around at night, you certainly see a lot of yeah. different things and you see a lot of the needs that sometimes mm. are unmet. Yeah, that's the heart of the mission field, too, even in location, because um, I can't imagine being separate and apart from those that you serve up close and personal. So speaking of that, how did this all begin for you? I mean, you're married, you know, got two beautiful daughters. Like, how did all this begin for you well, uh, and grow into where you were sitting today? Well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Um, you know, I just was blessed, you know, in December of 89 to be hired to to do this uh, job. And it's not a job. It's, you know, I always uh, share with the staff uh, there at St. Vincent de Paul, this is just a job you're in the wrong place. If this right. isn't a component of a faith life, something that is is really helping you to grow uh, uh, spiritually, then mm. you're in the wrong place. Because mm -hmm. you see so many challenges and it's only through faith that you can survive from day, uh, that first day to yeah. whatever 30, Four years plus yeah. is that you know you you just kind of you kind of learn every day is a new day mm -hmm. and certainly the last several years have been um, challenging but mm -hmm. with faith you have everything without God you have nothing yeah there's so much hope that pours out from St. Vincent de Paul too uh, I've just always been very attracted to that mission in the ministry and the hope that you know comes forth from that even the people that you know you're serving on the front line to those that you will probably never see right the fruits of that ministry just expand out through a whole community and then into the world so right. that's one of my like favorite places but it has a long history here oh without a doubt you know, your website talks about 1865 which is 100 years before we were both born <laughs> yes, um actively striving to understand and fulfill the needs of the most vulnerable in this community Yes, so indeed. over 150 plus years of serving the community. How did that start, you know, and kick off? Well, you know, it's a great story, as rich as our history. And that's Father Cyril Delacroix, who mm. was the incoming pastor at St. Joseph on December 27, 1865. And a lot of people don't know that Father Delacroix, um, he is considered one of the fathers of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, not only in Baton Rouge, but also New Orleans, therefore hmm. Louisiana. Really? Um, William Blair Lancaster, who was a uh, law student in uh, Paris, uh, had Frederick hmm. Ozanam, the founder of the Society, as yeah. a law professor. Really? And so uh, when he huh. came back to uh, Louisiana, to settle down, he went to St. Patrick's Church there in New Orleans mm -hmm. and he knocked on the door and Father Delacroix opened the door and they talked about this great thing called the Society of St. Wow. Vincent de Paul. Gosh. And so they started it there in 1852 mm -hmm. when uh, Father Delacroix was transferred in 1865 to St. Joseph. He started it, saw yeah. the need for it at that time. Mm -hmm. and. Um, was a great, you know, he was pastor till 1892. Wow, 30 something so, years. Yeah, yeah so, so wow. he, uh, he was uh, 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 the foundation on which mm. the society is built here locally. Wow, so the gentleman from New Orleans had firsthand, like, 
you know, formation, you could say, oh, yes. from Frederick Ozanon, who I believe is on his way to say no. He's blessed, Frederick yeah, Ozanon. Thank you for correcting yeah, me on that. Yeah. That's, a, that's an important so point not to that. miss. Uh, mm. But, but uh, you know, he's considered, uh, you know, someone who's truly an apostle in his top hat, because in France yeah. at the time, they often wore a top hat, gentlemen did. But he yeah. made home visits and was part of, a, a, you know, the movement that is known throughout the world in mm. over 150 countries. And mm -hmm. um, it all started, and he was 19 yeah. when he was uh, uh, inspired to, to work with others to start the society. Yeah, that's beautiful too, which also kind of gives us a testimony that we'll always have the vulnerable with us, mm -hmm. right? Always, Jesus says that in scriptures, you'll always have the poor with you, which kind of leads into the mission statement of St. Vincent de Paul, which this is beautiful. A network of friends inspired by gospel values, growing in holiness, and building a more just world through personal relationships with and service to people in need. I know you see that lived out every day. I love just the gathering of friends. Yeah, together. yeah, it, yeah. It, it's wonderful. It explains our society. It's mm -hmm. people in uh, relationships coming together to live their faith together. We're mm -hmm. uh, all on a spiritual journey, and uh, when we journey together, it's more powerful. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that that is a concern for others. And uh, recently, Deacon Eulis Simeon yeah. told me uh, we were having a conversation. And uh, in that conversation, he said, you know, Michael, we should be more concerned about the salvation of others than our own salvation. In a lot of ways, I've always kind of thought about the airplane philosophy of that, which is, you know how when you get on an airplane, they always tell you, if the oxygen mask drops, put it on yourself first and then help others. Right. Well, what Deacon Eulis shared with me was just the opposite. Mm -hmm. And if you think about that, that's growing in holiness, wow. thinking about others, thinking that maybe if they see a glimpse of Christ, they will be uh, thinking about uh, in their most time of vulnerable need. And I think that's what uh, the society is, why the society is so attractive to so many people throughout our community. I think it's because uh, people understand what we do, they know what we do, and uh, they, they, they want to help. And by helping, they grow internally. And that's the sacrificial nature of our love of the Lord, right? right. The sacrifice of the Lord poured out for us for love of the world and salvation of souls. And so the sacrifices that, that volunteers make for others that are so in need, um, themselves give a part you know, of their lives at that moment in that time, but it never leaves them. I find when my children were experiencing visiting some of the areas and serving at St. Vincent de Paul is growing up, they always remember those times that they were there. Mom, remember when we went to Sweet Dream Shelter? Remember when we collected this? Remember when we went and served food? And I'm like, yeah, and that's impressionable for them. And it was times where they could have been off doing other things, right? But the opportunity for them to know the love of the Lord mm -hmm. poured out from them because we're cleaved to the Lord, right? right. And that love, right. you know, moves us to be able to want what's best for other people. No sacrifice doubt. Sacrifice for them. No yeah. doubt. Well, they had an encounter with Christ for I was hungry. And it's something that those are the kind of spiritual moments internally that really, you know, that's at the core of the Society of St. Vincent yeah. de Paul. So it, it really sticks and they understand that. And, and it is a gift that'll last a lifetime. Yeah, and recently too, um, you all are erecting a chapel. That's correct. Yeah, which is phenomenal. Yeah. It's been a many year work in progress. Yeah, and great things from, take time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, we started out with one concept of a really small chapel. Now it's uh, going to be a little bit larger and it's going to be a meeting room attached. And so it's grown from a, a tiny project into a really big one. So we hope to break ground before the end of the year. And uh, we're, uh, everything is there. The engineering is pretty much complete. The architectural has been done. Uh, so we're, we're, we're hopefully next year at this time, it'll be open. That's beautiful. And there's That's always beautiful. financial opportunities to support that. We'll talk about that at the end of the show, too. Um, and another thing, another kind of component of the outreach um, are the actual local parish conferences, too. 
Tell us a little bit about that, each of the church parishes, well, that's some what, of them. Yeah, that's what Father, Father Delacroix started all those many years ago. It was the first St. Vincent de Paul conference. And you're right, it's a wonderful ministry. And so I encourage anybody that has that ministry in their parish to join. To, yeah. You know, it's where you encounter Christ. And it's also where, you, as you mentioned on our mission statement, where you grow in holiness. Uh, that's... That is just something very substantial in someone's spiritual life. So I encourage you to search that out. If you don't have a St. Vincent de Paul group in your parish, talk to your pastor about starting one because it's easy. Just call me at St. Vincent de Paul and we'll be glad to work with you to establish a ministry. It's a very powerful ministry. Uh, a lot of people think it's a social service ministry, which they often think about the society, but we're not. We're a spiritual group growing in holiness together by serving Christ. And it, that's a powerful differential. Yeah. yeah, and they encounter people. I experienced that when I was serving at a parish as pastoral director and, and, and sitting in on the, our parish conference. And, you know, the gatherings began in prayer. Yes. Even if they were meeting someone that was knocking right. on the door and saying, I'm kind of at a, you know, at a crossroads. And they would pray with them and they would talk with them and accompany them helping them encounter Jesus and then assessing their needs. Um, but it was always their relationship with Christ first. Right. You know, knowing that the Lord is with them, right. acknowledging this is a time of suffering and struggle, but it not it can always be temporary, right? You know, it's right. a temporary time of affliction right. that invites the Lord in to accompany them. No doubt. And, and I've seen beautiful conversions of people mm. that have actually began a new life in Christ and yes. not hanging in the despair Right. But seeing the hope right. and the help that comes from others and then turning around and doing it for other people. Right. Which is was like very powerful witness. Also to those that are serving the conferences, you know, right. they're seeped in holiness and right. their desire to give from their love of the Lord too. And I know you've seen that time all the and time. time again, you know, yeah. people that uh, they, you know, when you're practicing your faith and we're all challenged, we all are sinners, we're all working on um, the forgiveness that we all need. But during that spiritual process of growing spiritually, we realize it's all about others. I mean, Jesus, you know, I think the reason why the society's been so powerful is his focus on sharing God's love with those in need, not being judgmental, but instead, uh, as one Vincentian one time told me, is, Michael, it's not our role to judge, but to evaluate how we can help this person that desperately needs uh, a loving hand of God in their life. And uh, sometimes that turns out wonderfully well for the person that's assisted. Sometimes it doesn't turn out as well there, but the person that's in the ministry, they show, they really understand and they show God's love, but they also, they feel that growth and understanding spiritually. And, and that's part of the reason we want a chapel on our campus, so that when people encounter Christ, they can pray before, after, and really connect what they're doing at St. Vincent de Paul with their faith life. Exactly. Because that's what it's all about. Exactly. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about kind of, you know, the services that are that are kind of radiate out of the mission of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul in the greater Baton Rouge area. Stay with us. We'll be right back in just a minute. We are the fog on your glasses. We are the cup to go at breakfast. We are the answer to your deadline. We are closing clo closing the deal. But more than anything, we are never being out of coffee ever again. Never. We are River Road Coffees, and we're ready to prove that our coffee is better than whatever coffee you're drinking at the office. Call us today for a side-by-side -side taste test so you can get powered by River Road Coffees.
Welcome back to Catholic Life as we spotlight ordinary people with extraordinary faith. We are here continuing our conversation with Michael Ocaldo, who is the CEO and director of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul in Greater Baton Rouge area. So <laughs> that's a long title. I thought evangelization and catechesis yeah. was a long title, but you have a title longer than what I possess to. So thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. So we laid the foundations of the society, the mission, um, the prayerfulness of it, the outreach, the parish councils and conferences. Let's talk about like details. You know, what are actually the missions that come forth from Society of St. Vincent de Paul? So you have them listed on the website as services, I guess you want to call them that. So main thing, I think when people think of St. Vincent de Paul, they think of the food, right? Right. right? And so- yes. You all feed a lot of people. Yes, we do. Yeah. We're blessed with that ministry. And, yeah. uh, you know, whether you call it services or ministries, uh, it's all, you know, focused on our mission of helping those who are truly in need of a helping hand up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we see a line in our dining room, we see, let's say there's 100 people out there when we open the doors. Yeah. Um, we see a hundred opportunities mm. to serve Christ. That's yeah. how you have to look at it. Yeah, and, wow. And uh, it's an uplifting way. And last year we were successful on 255,000 occasions by serving wow. meals to those who were truly in need. And yeah. this year we're gonna do north of 260,000 really? because the demand is up. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, we're blessed to be the leader in the community and providing prepared meals. and. Mm -hmm. Uh, we continue to do so. Uh, just hot meals alone, that doesn't count the brown bag suppers. Right. Just this past Friday, 460 meal, hot meals. Mm -hmm. And in addition, you know, over 450 brown bag suppers were given out yeah. as well. So, you know, one day, almost a thousand meals wow. were over. Yeah, yeah. almost uh, and, right and, there, a thousand And meals. that's good food. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was great because we had a wonderful group come in and help us and volunteers are there every day mm -hmm. helping us and making a big difference in our community. So, so you have the main dining hall, yes. which is located near downtown Baton Ridge. Are there any other facilities that distribute the meals as well too? Thanks to Father Tat's support there at St. Jared. Oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. We have a location there. We serve two uh, meals a day there, Tuesday and Thursday, every day, every week of the year. And so that provides us outreach in the northern part of the That's parish. About two to 300 people, I think, that they get. Each lot. time, yeah. yes, indeed. So it's exciting to be there for people who don't have anywhere else to turn yeah. for that hot prepared meal. And then there's the kind of the larger gatherings too, right? Is there still one for Thanksgiving? Is Without there one for Christmas, doubt. Easter? Uh, no doubt about it. You know, Thanksgiving our, is our biggest meal of the year. Yeah. And so we not only do Saint Thanksgiving at St. Vincent de Paul, our main campus, but we also do it at the River Center. Uh, we also do it at St. Jared. And we, we, last year we started doing it at the McKinley Alumni Center as Beautiful. well. So we got north, south, um, as well as the downtown area yeah. and our St. Vincent de Paul campus area, well covered. Those are the highest levels of poverty in wow. our community. And so it enables us to really make a difference. And through the Raising Canes River Center, we're able to do a lot of delivery of meals to oh, people gotcha. that are in need. So that's a wonderful opportunity for us to really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Wow, and I know that there are families that come, you know, throughout oh, the day, yes. throughout the week. And yes. that's seven days a week, is that right? Twice a day? We're the only kitchen that provides service 365 yeah, days a I year thought. to the entire community and have done so since 1982 mm -hmm. when the facility opened in a small shotgun house with a lot of faith <laughs> and uh, literally uh, has gotten us to the day of uh, being able to do over 260,000 meals this year. It's such a culture too in South Louisiana. You know, Dude, people uh, love yeah. to cook yes. and they love to share, you know, their times and opportunities. I know I've cooked many a chicken rice dinners yes, and indeed. green beans and yeah, and, and I remember preparing the meals mm -hmm. um, prayerfully. Yes. You know, and just praying over the Lord, whoever eats these, you know, exactly. meals, when they bring not only the nourishment of the body, but food for the soul, right. you know, encountering the Lord. So, yeah, I, I love that. And there's volunteer opportunities for that, and people can go to the website. Wonderful and, um, opportunities yeah. to serve at our dining I know there room. are families that on Thanksgiving Day will go and serve meals 
oh, and then yes. they'll go home, you know, later. That's and exactly partake right. In their own celebration too. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great way to spend some time together as That's a family. That's so beautiful. Another um, major component too is sheltering mm. oh, men yes. and women and families. Now That's too. correct. Yeah, tell us a little bit about the shelters. Uh, it makes a tremendous difference in the lives of those in need, and, and you know, it's named in honor of Bishop Stanley Joseph Ott, who was just such a supporter of our local society, but was somebody who really did care for the poor in a, a great way. And how blessed we are with all of our bishops. Bishop Duca is there for us in so many different ways, and so we try to live up to uh, what we're called to do as a church is to respond to people that truly in need. And it's been a lot of change. You know, in 1991, when we opened our first shelter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it was for men. Uh, yeah. And then later on, we opened up another men's facility. But we saw also the emergence of more homelessness uh, being experienced by women, single women, and then also families. And so we serve pretty much, you know, any, any adult, any family that has a child, mothers with children, that is predominantly who we serve, but we also serve fathers with children, couples with children, you know? So it's, it's just, you know, uh, obviously moms with uh, children are, are A number one. Um, we see maybe a father or two every year that comes in with a family, and then, you know, moms and dads with children, uh, intact families that come in and they don't have a place to turn and they turn to St. Vincent de Paul and we're there to help them. Are there resources for them to help find some type of permanent housing as well to kind of- Our main them? focus being a housing first philosophy organization is housing is our focus. Yeah. So we want to get people in and out as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. Often we'll hear from guests, you know, they may ask, well, how long can I stay? And yeah. our answer is real quick. You do what you need to do. You're not going to need to stay long because right. we don't want people to accept shelter yeah. as, as a new place to call home. Right. We're a short place to call home. Yeah. Yeah. And so sometimes that means maybe reunifying families, mm. doing what's necessary to help people find an apartment they can afford or find a job. Yeah. So case management is provided and we do everything we possibly can to help people break the cycle and serving those individual and those family needs too by caring yes, for indeed. them. I, I thought that temporary shelter is kind of, I call it the bridge. You yes. know, you're just having a bridge from That's here correct. to here. The bridge of hope is yes, what keeps indeed. coming to mind. No just a beautiful bridge of hope. Um, and I, another ministry that is coming forth is the community pharmacy. Yes. That's been around for how long now? Since 1995. Mm -hmm. And uh, may, you know, we've saved thousands of lives, yeah. you know, by yeah. giving people heart medicine, diabetic medicine, high blood pressure medicine, et cetera. And we continue to do so today. So our message today is if you know somebody's going without their life sustaining medicine, mm. send them to St. Vincent de Paul. Yeah. We're there to help. We're there to make a difference. And uh, because often when someone comes in, we ask them what they were doing. They were either breaking tablets in half uh, or they no. didn't. And, and but they were doing that because they didn't know about us, right. that we were there to help. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, wonderful to be helped. And the pharmacy there. staff, they're volunteers as well, too, correct? The vast majority of all our staff yeah. are volunteers. Yeah. However, um, you know, we have a, a, a staff pharmacist and others yeah. that are there to make sure we're doing everything and pursuing excellence right. uh, in providing prescription that's medicine. That's great. Yeah, that's wonderful too. We also have uniforms for kids. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that's so much fun. Yeah. No doubt about yeah. it. Uniforms have been going a long, uh, long yeah. time now, 1998. And you have some good community sponsors that support oh, that Oh yeah, too. you know, no doubt, WAB Channel 9, and we work with all the wonderful stations for various projects that really help us to make a difference in the lives of those in need. Uniforms for Kids, we've helped thousands of people this year and thousands and thousands in the course of uh, I like the our whole, history. I like the uniform situation too, because it helps parents uh, <laughs> with yes, their children indeed. getting dressed in the no mornings. Doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, and then you have the Easter baskets, the Christmas children's giveaway, yes, you know, indeed. with the toys. Um, also, to the the disaster services, right. um, which we don't hear a whole lot about, but that happens. You know, there's relief that comes through St. Vincent de Paul with the disaster services. And it dep depends on how you define a disaster. Yeah. For us, when it drops down to 32 degrees, yeah. it's a disaster locally. You need to try to get people off the street. Yeah. When we went 
30 straight days, over 100 here in Baton Rouge, it seemed like. Yeah. Uh, we were here to get people off the street mm -hmm. during those excessive heat periods. Yeah. So you yeah. add up all my 34 years here at St. Vincent de Paul. We did more of that this summer than all the other years really? combined with the heat. Yeah. You know, it was excessively it was. hot. It's all summer long. It, yeah. yeah, and we had to make an excessive response mm. to that problem. Yeah. And uh, that's what's so great about the society, whether it's these things we're talking about or like our Bravo Dental, the dental Clinic. Yeah, I'll see you that know, too. it's mm -hmm. part of the pharmacy project. Yeah. Uh, we're making a difference for yeah. people who are and truly in need. That, that meets all the needs, you know, the healthcare needs, the spiritual needs, the physical right. needs, the emotional needs, the mental needs. Again, a bridge of hope of right. providing it. So what are the opportunities for volunteers? I mean, do they just go to the website and you know, sign up? You know, up that is or? the best way mm -hmm. is to go to the website and sign up, whether you want to volunteer on Thanksgiving Day or you want to do it every day or you want to do it once a quarter. We have volunteers that come in every week, as you know. Yeah. yeah. So so whatever you time you have that you want to spend with Christ and the part yeah. of the dining room is hundreds of people yes. that you have the opportunity to encounter Christ with, no doubt about it, go to our website, svdpbr.org, and uh, you can uh, sign up. The, the schedule's there, and you can pick your particular uh, way you want to live your faith. Yeah, that's beautiful. We have to talk about financial support because, I mean, it doesn't really run on its own all the time, right? No doubt. Yeah, all missions need some type of financial support. So, what are those opportunities that people can give? Well, first, a big thank you to the community. I've been yeah. blessed over the last 34 years to have so much wonderful support. Mm -hmm. And we're a charity that you can drop in today and see us in action. You're, yeah. We're the real deal. <laughs> and so, well, thanks to everyone that make those meals possible mm -hmm. and make the shelter services possible and the prescription medicine possible. It's only through them that we're able to really make a difference to the person that shows up to our door. Mm -hmm. You mentioned some of our, you know, all of the television stations locally are behind us. Yeah. Catholic TV is behind yeah, us. Always. Everybody is really getting the message out of what our mission and ministry is. It's easy to give at our website at svdpbr.org. But we like people to really know when they invest in St. Vincent de Paul, they really are investing in our ministry to those who are most vulnerable. Yeah, and I'm thinking about the stores, too. You still have the same. Oh, yes. I love the stores. They're yes. wonderful. And, and, you know, and I always kind of have seasonal opportunities where, you know, we donate to the stores and also to shop and, there. Oh, no yeah. doubt. That's Come, fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, donate your items. We desperately need yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. So. We're out of time. We could probably talk for another two hours or so. Sure. Thank you so much for your care and, and accompanying people and leading people in this mission of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul. It's just, it's been a blessing, you know, to know you and to see you grow through this. And um, yeah, we're there with you. So thank you so much for what you do to provide hope and help for people in their community. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean. Yeah, it's been great being with you. Yeah, see you soon. We'll see you next time on Catholic Life. Until then, may God bless you and grant you His peace.